Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Let's Play Stormblood. We decided to job change yet again because this village is unknown to us and we're going to be unknown to them since we no longer have a friendly friend as a proper introduction. So hopefully we can placate them with some carbuncle slippers. Sounds good? Sounds good. Yeah, I just wonder how long it lasts. Like, is it, maybe we should have asked that. Like, is this permanent? Is this temporary? Like, does it fade if I get too far from the Ruby Sea or in the Kami and whatever? I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure an isolated village probably doesn't have street signs, you know, saying the equivalent of City Hall, you know, one mile away or anything like that. Well, they're probably like, who the heck are you people? Like, you don't look like us. Well, let's just talk to some random people. Oh, well, tell me about yourself. So, you're the clerk. Okay, well, tell me where we are. Well, I know where we are, but I'd like to be educated about your area. <laughs> um, okay. Not information that's helpful to us right now, but... Well, we can see their diet consists quite a bit of fish. I'm not going to talk to everybody. I'm just talking to a few random people. It was not me. Lace, Alize, what have you done? Well, clearly these people aren't as freaked out at me as Alize suggests, although... It's not an unfair assumption. They're probably just like looking at us just, just warily being like, okay, like what's going on? Hello, children. Some kind of meditation ceremony or something going on over here. Okay, I'll leave you guys be. Oh, well that was easy. Thank goodness for gameplay mechanics, huh? Wait, 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 what? That is an otter. Wh wh why can't I play triple triad with, with an otter? Do you even have thumbs? Okay. Well, the girl mentioned his pet otter, so... Even without our little meteor sign above his head, I take it we found the right place. Um, hi, the Kojin suggested I come over here and talk to you, maybe hear us out? See, we even know your name, like... Yeah, see, 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 we were... I know, I, I know we don't have an appointment or anything like that, but... We were told to come here. Why? But but it's a treasure that's going to be treasured in in you know, cared for by the Kojin and stuff like that. Like, it's a sacred thing to them. Like, we're not in it for profit. But why you gotta kick us out? Like, we're not here to, like, mess up anything up here. Can, can, can you please just stop being a jerk? Like, even the pirates weren't this much of a dick to us. Yeah, you tell him. 
Elise says you're being a dick. Can you please stop? But we're not gonna tell anybody you're here or anything. It's like, we're already here. Like, if you're trying to protect cover from any outsider, you've already been blown. We just want to ask you a question or two. We're not here to break into your home and pillage and other things. But we're not gonna remain here. We're just asking you a stupid freaking question. That's it. That's it. Nothing more. Hey, we're looking for this sacred cogent relic. We heard it's around here somewhere. Can you point us in the right freaking direction, please? Thank you very much. All we want. Clearly your isolationism doesn't exclude the blue cogent because you knew they were the ones who sent me here. So obviously we're friends with them, okay? Like, trust by association kind of thing. Yeah, we're, like, taking forever to solve this problem, like... This is getting so dang annoying. Like, we haven't even, like, mentioned the fact that, hey, we're, we're trying to rescue our friend and stuff like that. of this filthy tavern and it's still filthier clientele well did you get that drink you wanted though asking the important questions here this scant reward for your treachery I a painted woman of your rich experience deserves a better class of customer oh, name calling is that what we've been reduced to Orphan of the Nayuri. Widow of Sashiai. What joy it must have brought you to be revenged upon us all. Uh-oh. I think you made her mad, bruh. Not enough. Not nearly enough. My appetite for your agony is as an abyss, bottomless, insatiable. Before you die, you will cry and beg and prostrate yourself upon the earth. You will crawl on your belly through the muck and the piss and debase yourself for my amusement. All of you. But you think you are made of sterner stuff? Hmm. Rather than have him beat you, mayhap I should have my oath go and fetch your master's head. Oh, poor, poor Lord Cayenne. 
Kami rest his soul. Noble leader of a fallen nation. A fine puppet he made for the Viceroy. For a time. Twenty-five years he was content to serve his masters as a dog. And then everyone had to rise up and get themselves killed. Tell me. How did it feel to fail him that day? To live with the disgrace of his death? Not that you were a stranger to living with disgrace, of course. In the what was it? 25 years since you were humiliated and tossed into an imperial jail, you had plenty of time to get used to it. Oh yes, I heard the stories. About the samurai who would do anything to return to his master's side, even if it meant pledging his blade to his sworn enemy. They say he walked with death, that he slew a thousand men in the Empire's name. Truly a tale for the poets. I do not deny my sins. But I will not be reproached by the likes of you. Oh, I mean not to reproach you, but to praise you. You're a survivor, Samurai. Just like me. So... Let us not dwell on the past, you and I, and instead give thought to the future. To wit, I would ask you again to help me resolve this vexing matter of Dorma's missing heir. Living or dead, it makes no difference, really. But the Garleans are most insistent that we put this problem behind us. And I know you helped him flee. So tell me, what became of Lord Hien? To my dismay, the details escape me at present. Mayhap your dog could jog my memory. Get on with it, and mark me, brute. There is no limit to how far you can fall. Of all the bloody... stupid... <laughs> oh! When I get back to Eorzea... I'm gonna find that little shite, and I'm gonna make her pay. Yeah. Uh. So yeah. He seems to be doing okay, all things considered over there. I mean, not that we actually know that. But I want you to take into account some of the things that were said back and forth between that conversation. They're not really relevant to go into detail now, but they will be kind of important a bit later. And we'll get to that when we do. Uh, one thing I do want you to take note of, because it is, it is somewhat important, although it doesn't pay off till later. Yatsuyu never refers to him by name at any point in there, even though she clearly knows exactly who he is and exactly what he has done. So yeah, she is just, she just looks down upon absolutely everybody. And she certainly has a way with words and interrogation, which again, you may not like it, but you gotta have a certain respect for that. But moving on. Tell me where I can tell these guys to shove it so they stop saying no to us without good reason. What the, why don't we ask the villagers?
I mean, he's so keen upon keeping, you know, with, with the wishes of the people in the village. Why don't we ask what they actually are? Um, okay, or maybe one of them can come to us? Uh, hi! Well, we don't have anything current because, well, we're on our way to get there, but we need, we, we're kind of in an emergency, but... We may know something about what happened in recent times. Not sure if that's going to be any of any direct value to you, but... Okay, alright, there's a personal stake in this. Wait, 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 hold, hold on, hold on, hold the phone here, hold the phone here. I really hope that's not a really common name. Because... That's the craziest coincidence I've heard all day. Yeah, she's she's kind of still missing, but we have no reason to believe that she's not okay. Like, girl can take care of herself, so... Yeah, so, uh, she's from Sweeno Sato. Never ever mentioned anything about this before. So, who was this other child who snuck out with her? So, she was exiled. That really sucks. Oh, sweet! Oh, you are the best, man. See, we see Mr. Boss at this place, that's literally all you needed to do. Being like, here, here's how you could find this thing, get the fuck out of my village. That's all you had to do! That's all you had to do! Aw, she's even got brothers! Aw. That's sweet. So, yeah, that really solves our problem, um, rather quickly. But I do like how they phrase it in such a way that... Basically, when he comes up and asks, he's, he doesn't immediately ask, Hey, you know, have you randomly seen my daughter? They're, they're very specifically asking for general news, just, just in hopes of possibly putting together some pieces of finding something that happened. Like, obviously, if, if, you know, there was a great war and they all fell or whatever, you know, they, you know, give them some sense of, you know, do they know if she's alive or dead kind of thing. And by naming her, it gives a more bit of personal feeling to it. Like, he knows it's probably not going to matter, but it basically... It, it, it puts a name and a face to, you know, their their missing child, basically.
Okay. Shame, you know, he didn't label us on the map of ours or anything. Wonder if we got a detailed description of what this thing even looked like. But we're gonna need to use this lamp a bunch, so we're just gonna stick it on a hot bar for now. No, oh, I'm already getting close, even though I just picked a random spot, okay? Maybe it's stuck behind this piece of coral. I mean, of course, I can get stuck there first, but... <laughs> well, maybe if you told me what direction closer. Ugh, game, you are impossible right now. Hey, I found it! Okay, where are my friends though? No, they, there's one of you. Well, you're like 20 feet away from this thing. Get up and go closer. Like, you're not even in the ground. Do you think it's gonna be sitting up floating in the air, Alize? Come on. Come on, you're supposed to be the smart one over here. Oh great, it's actually gonna make me pick it up. <laughs> Not sure why that didn't quite load, but... Or I'm blind and didn't see it. Whatever. We're just gonna pretend that didn't happen, okay? Alright, okay. Oh, so we did describe to us what it looked like. Okay, it would have been helpful if, you know, that was made a plot point of. Okay, yeah, sorry for clipping right through you here. <laughs> Alright, so we can finally gain the trust of the Kojin. So... They can tell us how to properly deal with the Reds, so we can finish our deal with the stupid idiot pirates and hopefully gain their cooperation for liberating a fishing village. God, this is starting to sound like Operation Absolute Absurdity Volume 3. So yeah, well, there's a ton of side quests in involved in, in this area. Most of them aren't important, except for this one right here. This one actually starts a chain of quests that will give us unlock the R level 63 dungeon, which is technically the optional dungeon, although we do need to do it to get an Aether Current here. Uh, be unlike Dusk Vigil in Heaven's Ward, that one actually has its own little minor plot attached to it that I would like to go into, but now is not really the right time. So once we actually liberate Asari and take care of that problem, um, we're gonna come back and we're gonna take care of that. And it's probably gonna be super, super long episodes. Uh, they don't relate to the MSQ at all, but I would like to cover them. So we're gonna we're gonna record and, and view those a little bit out of continuity. So if you're curious about that, wait until the MSQ is done with the Asari stuff, and we will take care of that. Okay? All right. Okay. Lisa's is getting straight to the point here. <laughs> Let's 
So we're special then? Okay. So, we're going to deliberately piss them off in order th for them to choose the treasure over the Imperials. Um, okay. So, going to be an offering of sorts to appease the gods, I guess. Alright. Oh, so, so we are chosen ones of, of kinds. Okay. Oh, Sorbin, you are such a bro. I love you. You don't have to do all this stuff for us. We already fulfilled our bargain ages ago. So glad we have him as a friend. So, so yeah, it is a little kind of warped that they wanted us to find this jewel before the Red did, but because of their... The faith that both the red and the blue Kojin share, they want it in the same place anyway, so I don't understand what difference it would have made if the red or the blue found it. I mean, I guess that has something to do with the fact that, you know, like they said last time, that they have to hide their faith from the Imperials, who are very, very staunch atheists. So they think, you know, they think it's twisted and messed up that they, they hide their faith in order to honor it, so... Moral quandary, I I guess? I, I honestly don't know. Um, that That's the closest thing I can get, that they wanted to make sure, you know, chosen people, I mean, well, chosen people had to have found it, otherwise we never would have found it. So, yeah, I'm just talking out my butt right now. Alright then, so that's gonna have to be it for this episode. So next time we're gonna head to the Kojin's sacred vault and hopefully put this completely convoluted plan into motion to save Gosetsu. Finally, finally we're getting somewhere. Thank goodness. So thank you for watching my friends and I shall see you next time. <laughs>